What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5, 57 civs, AI only, well, I guess we just call it AI only world battle at this point because it's never good to use numbers in the title because all the civs die <laughs> and it's just no longer, no longer the same but whatever, it's fine, it's good, it's been very exciting, I've had some comments, people enjoying it so that's good news. I think it is quite balanced, I don't think anyone's, you know, really, I don't, there's no like, there's a few good civs, a few in the lead but certainly not, you know, as far ahead as we normally have, we normally have like a trio who are just a million miles into the distance. That is not the case this time around. Um, so that's good. It's good. At the moment, there's still many civs competing. I think that's chances for other civs to join those big guys if they conquer the right things, make the right moves. So yeah, I think it's definitely still a very open game. Plenty of mid-tier civs, which is always the good sign. There's not many really tiny rubbish ones. Can't really see any, to be honest. I'm sure there's some I'm missing, but you know, Harappa and Persia, I guess you'd put in the like the bottom tier. Um, other bottom tier, I mean, it's hard. I would, I'll keep California and the Chinook as the very bottom of middle tier. That's being kind. Um, the Mayans are certainly probably in last tier. I, it's a bit harsh, but yeah, I'd have to put them in there probably. Not been going well for them. Um. The Inca, again, it's not that they're rubbish now, it's that there's there's literally nothing they can really do to save this. It's not going to get any better. So they're probably on the edge of bottom tier as well. The Goths, really, I, I don't know where I'd put them either. They're in a very brutal spot too. It's kind of hard. I wouldn't say any of these are as bad as Persia, Harappa, Arabia. These Those three are sort of unsavable at this point, but... Yeah, it's a bit harsh. I mean, Mali and Morocco and Carthage are all sort of clinging on, but even Carthage isn't that good. They should probably be in with Harappa and that sort of bottom tier. Um, yeah, I don't even know how good Parthia really is, to be honest. So they're sort of in that same level, to be honest. So it's a bit harsh. For now, we'll just say Harappa. Uh, no, sorry, not, not Harappa. I'm going to be nice to them. Persia and Arabia are currently the only civs in the very bottom bin tier. Uh, even Russia could be, but again, they're sort of similar. Like, I feel like there's too many sieves, like, straddling the border with, like, one foot in middle, one foot, one foot in bottom. It's a bit harsh, um, because, like, there are some good sieves. I mean, Indonesia, like, another small sieve, but they look really good, to be fair. So, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be too harsh on them here. I will just put Arabia and Persia, the sort of one city, no hopers in the bottom for now. In the future, we might come up with a better way to define those tiers. And then there's, obviously, from some of those lower medium ones that I'm stuck on to upper mediums a bit more obvious. Denmark, for example, is a solid medium tier sieve, I would say, in my opinion. Um, I don't know where Australia fits in again, probably lower medium. It's kind of hard. Samoa's a medium tier sieve, but they're like high medium, approach with Great War Infantry too. Korea and Mongolia are high. High tier, top tier, alongside. Mm, maybe Attila in the future. The Iroquois are obviously in there as well. And there's some other contenders for high tier. Brazil could theoretically go in there. I was maybe a bit harsh on Samoa. Japan's looking really good considering they're fighting on two sides of the Pacific. Uh, Belgium is on paper really good as well, even though they don't sort of look like a big big empire, they do have plenty going well for them. So yeah, I don't want to rule anyone out. I won't, We won't put anyone in a box just yet of low, apart from Arabia, because they suck, and and Persia. They've just not had a good game. Like that's Well, Persia in particular. Arabia were doing fine. They made a dodgy peace deal, and it all went downhill from there. Attacking Burundi is not going to help them out. Egypt versus Congo. That's pretty big, but it's not like they don't border each other, but it is a sign. It might start to see some of these medium sieves teaming up against each other in Africa. And we might finally see some even bigger nations emerge, because at the moment they're all sort of equal strength. They've all got their own little benefits, but for the most part, they're all pretty pretty equal. But yeah, seeing some of them go after each other could change that for sure. Siam also v Burundi? Nope. Not too important. Korea pieces out with Siam. They did grab one city and they hold on to it. So there you go, Siam. Losing their coastal city. And if Japan grabs this one, Siam will lose their access to the coast. At least from Southeast Asia. They will still have this city in Southeastern India. And one in the... 
I mean, it's a puppet, so it can't build boats or anything, but they do have the city still in the Arabian Peninsula, at least for now. Uh, Korea versus Parthia. I mean, Korea actually has planes, which is incredible. That just came out of nowhere. Did not know that until I clicked on this city. Um, but that's scary for Parthia, and that's probably what's contributing here. Mongolia's artillery too, getting involved. Spain and the Goths. Yeah, this should probably be the end of Parthia now. The Huns were struggling, but now with Mongolia and Korea helping out with an all range of advanced technology, this should probably be the end of Parthia and all the big nations sort of meeting in the middle of Central Asia. Spain and Austria also piecing out, which was not particularly important. No cities changed hands. It's all good. Don't worry. We got Arabia piecing out with the Goths. Again, or huge. Oh, Ethiopia maybe just might squeeze in there and grab Mecca. That would be pretty big. Yeah, Arabia piecing out with the Goths. Not a huge, not a huge peace deal. Not the one we were waiting for or keeping an eye out for. But there you go. We've got it. Those two no longer fighting. Not really sure what the Goths are supposed to do for the rest of this game. I do feel for them a little bit. That that Austrian citadel spam is so brutal. Like that is. That is so rough, like they took what, all these tiles, well I assume this was Austria's land, so they maybe grabbed like three tiles here with this citadel, then this one got them all of this, um, obviously they can't take the city off them, and then this one just got them even more, that's so rough, and it does, at least it sets Austria up for a bit of a comeback, because they lost Graz, that was a little concerning, but now they have a chance to at least come back, grab the city, you know, maybe grab all of the Goths territory, that would be quite interesting. Probably not, because the Goths have got very weird borders themselves. Samoa versus the Congo. That is going to be a battle for Madagascar, but I would imagine we'll probably see Congo kick Samoa out, if anything. Although Samoa have much higher city defence than Congo, but yeah, Samoa's not obviously going to come and attack them. I don't really know why Samoa declared this. I'm not really ready for it, a bit weird. Samoa also going after Burundi, so yeah, they're certainly going to lose this. <laughs> I think they just wanted to get rid of it. And Samoa has then adopted the autocracy ideology. Another, another Civ. I think we've got a bit of a lean towards autocracy from the Civ so far, which is, I was going to say expected. It's kind of expected, I guess. It's probably the most domination favouring ideology. Order's pretty good as well, but yeah, certainly leans towards autocracy. I don't think it's anything to do with the Civs this time. I might be wrong. It's not much of the tourism. I guess some tourism now, Brazil, Samoa's a big one going in the opposite direction. But yeah, both sides have dissidents now. That's a bit awkward. It seems to be just some of certain nations struggling. Texas, Mongolia, Japan. But they all have enough happiness, at least for now, to ride through the storm. And Texas is going to settle in Hawaii, by the look of it. So they'll have a new holiday de destination. Although to be fair, Texas, they look like they've got a good sort of mix in the climate. You know, they've got a nice... San Antonio is a little cooler, but probably... Actually, I, I don't know what the weather's like here. I'm guessing it's a bit cooler. It seems quite far up north, pretty near the Canadian border on this map. That is obviously distorted. You know, between the rivers, probably quite a cool, more... If you're not too such a fan of the heat, meanwhile, if you love the heat, Austin, Houston down here, much more desert or at least sunny weather. I mean, Florida... Not Florida, the Yucatan Peninsula here for the very tropical lovers and the rainforest. You know, if you like the desert and the beach, you've got Dallas here in sort of western Mex northwestern Mexico, right in the desert, right in the sun, and now you're going to have Hawaii. So it's some fantastic holiday destinations for Texas. Where would you like to live if you were living in this world? I mean, for safety reasons, I don't know. North America is a very good shout, I'd say. Obviously, the West Coast is a bit of a mess right now. But the Iroquois Empire wouldn't be the worst place to live. You know, you could come down to New York if you wanted the good weather. A bit colder up than the rest of it, particularly in the very far north. But there you go. And Spain has also joined autocracy. Spain wouldn't be a bad shout either. I mean, 1500 Spain. It looks okay. See the religions. Oh, so Islam has got into Iberia. But yeah, the Celts are spreading Catholicism through most of Western Europe. Islam, I think, was that the Garamantes with that religion in this game? Yes, now they are dead, so we'll see if it keeps spreading as much. It normally sort of fades away. In fact, you don't really, a little bit through Morocco and then up into Spain and Carthage, but it's not spread much throughout the way. The rest of Africa, a little bit of Egypt, one of the Sicilies cities, but nothing crazy. Naples is very small on this map. 
not much population for them in this game. I've got more, I think, now in mine. Oh, another ideology, Spain and the Congo. Trying to keep keep a bit of order. And see what I did there? They went order. Order and balance as they try and tip the scales back for order. But there we go. Communist, Congo, and I think that is the first African ideology. Unless I miss somebody. Um, Congo, Mongolia, Brazil, the two Sicilies. Oh, yeah, it's four versus, like, eight. So very outnumbered so far. But, yeah, that is the first African ideology for the Congo, and 10 more era score, uh, era score, Civ 6 getting confused in here, 10 more tourism for the team, so that's pretty good, that will certainly help out, and could obviously push some other African nations to go order as well, unless they hate the Congo, in which case they'll probably end up going autocracy, I guess it's a, it's a two way, two way street something. Uh, Japan did, does grab this city off Siam. They make some progress, some headway. We'll see if they keep going. This could be impressive if they keep conquering. And Parthia beginning to crumble. This city looks like it will be first, assuming this musketman can get through this. Although, completely ignored there. We'll see what happens. But yeah, this could be pretty close. But yeah, it's certainly not looking good for Parthia. You've got Mongolian artillery, Korean planes, the Huns who have been constantly putting you under pressure. Looks like it is going to fall apart for Parthia. Of course, they've already lost their capital to Attila. Not the biggest city in the world, but there you go. But they will also be losing the Khazar's capital, if they're not careful, to Korea. It's a little sad for them. Oh, Korea with a new city up here. Just control of the Northern Pacific, another naval base. So you think once they get plate, not, well, they have planes already, but even better planes. They'll be able to reach North America, potentially even reach the Iroquois with things like nukes and stealth bombers. So that's something scary for the Iroquois, who are failing to make any progress going west um, against the Shoshone. They do have some artillery, which is probably going to tip the tide a little bit, but still nothing, nothing really sticking for them at the moment. They are struggling to break through in North America. And look, at, I mean, the other cities, Texas and the Sioux, both with plenty of units to protect themselves with, should they go after somebody else instead. Spain with another settler. I don't know where this one's going. There's really no space left to settle. The only real realistic place, I mean, you could squeeze one in up here towards Alaska, maybe, if you wanted to. It looks like the Iroquois are going to weirdly try it, which could actually help them in this war. But I don't see this settler getting through here. For some reason, um, there's little bits around like Korea. Maybe you could squeeze one more in. Mongolia do come through and grab this city. I'm expecting. Oh, Korea! I don't. Want, I want Korea to get stuff. I feel bad. I don't know. We'll see who gets what. There'll probably be some border gore. It's for certain. Japan did lose their city that they took off Siam. We'll see if they get it back. And yeah, other places to settle. I mean, there's little bits of islands in the Pacific if you're really keen. You can get through. Australia does have some parts available, but beyond that, there's nowhere else. So Spain with that settler here, I guess it's going to try and squeeze through with open borders and maybe go to one of these Indonesian islands. I don't really see where else it could be planning on going. Not really anywhere to go. Brazil's population has stopped growing for a bit. Both cities have been at 24 for a while. Rio's been at 32, but Brasilia is coming along at six population. Maybe it's taking all the food off the other cities. I mean, if they were starting to run out of food, maybe they're just sending it elsewhere. That could be a good move if they they were struggling to grow. I think Brazil probably still has three of the top five cities in the world. Yep, three of the top four now. Apia, just about outgrowing Salvador and Sao Paulo, but that is crazy. Brazil leading the way. Urbini from Benin is up there. I mean, there's quite a few on 23 and 22, so that might just be alphabetical order at the very least. I, I don't know. Oh, no, yeah, it probably is alphabetical order. I don't know. Because U is after G, so I'm guessing it's either alphabetical or who got there first. But looking at this, Corral leading the Congo, Indonesia. No, oh, but then Egypt's there. I don't know. Maybe it's not alphabetical. Who knows what order it is, but it doesn't matter too much. Benin can have fifth for now. There's no points being awarded or anything. It doesn't matter. Just, yeah, Benin, you can be fifth. Have your, have your time to shine. Demographics. Brazil still massively leading the way for population. 32 million, about four times the average. Although that is, obviously the average will be a bit lower than it really is because my stats are all zero. Uh, crop yield, the Iroquois leading the way again. Same for production, gold and land. So they're still doing very well. Don't count them out just because they're not having much success in their war. They're still a very powerful sieve. 
Mongolia with the biggest military, almost double the average. Uh, yeah, well, actually, it is double the average. And Korea still leading the way for literacy, currently at 69%. Good old memes. 51% is then the average. So, yeah, about halfway for most of the civs. Parthia do recapture their city, but they're under more th stress here from Mongolia. That's pretty scary. Next turn, I'm sure we'll see a couple of cities falling away. Texas did settle. Corpus Christi here. So there you go. They have another, another cool location. Japan. Uh, are you still really going for much? No, they're all California. I thought it was the Chinook for a minute, but no, it's California. Chinook just chilling, doing their thing. Who's entered the industrial era of the Goths? That is a bit late. It's getting a bit concerning if you're entering the industrial era now. Uh, who else is this? Henry Parks. So, that's Australia, isn't it? That's also fairly concerning for the Australians. Um, we'll see how they hold up with Samoa. Looking stronger and stronger. More and more boats. It's not looking fun for the Aussies. And there you go. France showing. Oh no, France only just enters the industrial era too. That's pretty bad. France were one of the first units to get uh, sieves to get musketeers or musket men. For France, obviously, it's musketeers. And they've managed to uh, not not get anything else. That's, they've really slowed down since then as they only just entered the industrial era. One of the first in the Renaissance era. So yeah, that's not going well for them. I'm sure we'll see Belgium, Spain, Britain try it again at some point. Although France does have another city now, which will make it a little bit tougher. The Inca versus Harappa, because that's the war we were all, all sat here licking our lips waiting for. Mongolia in there too, they can't really reach. For now at least, Harappa will survive. Talking of big cities on the map, I mean Harappa is the top 10 city in the world. Maybe top 5 now, depending on how that list is chosen at 22. Um, so yeah, that's that's the city someone's going to want. India could do that. India's really struggled with population this game, I guess, because they've lacked tiles. Obviously the mountains don't give any yield. But um, yeah, they've just not really, not really shone in this one. Korea, this is a really nice catch, this city, just gives them a bit more influence over Eastern Asia, when Japan is sort of cutting them off for now, and you know, they might not want to fight Japan head to head, at least for now, they would have a fairly good advantage with technology, but as you can see, they still need to upgrade quite a lot of turtle ships, obviously money, probably getting in the way of upgrading all of those, uh, maybe oil as well, probably going to limit them, and frigates need iron, so yeah, it might take some time to upgrade everything and obviously the AI just genuinely likes to stick with their unique units regardless of how outdated they are I think the Congo is another example they have a lot of their Pombo units still who are probably a little bit out of date I think they're the same era they're almost identical to the Impies in terms of the unit I think they replace Spearman I can't remember their ability but yeah there's still a lot of them. And the Zulu are very popular, of course, with keeping the impies for probably too long. South Africa with a Fengu gunner. I've never seen that. what that is. Don't know what it is. But there you go. That's their unique unit, obviously. Pretty cool. California has completed the porcelain tower. Nice job. Can we see it anywhere? Oh, there's the pyramids. Uh, not yet. It might take a turn to load in. So that looks like a wonder. I don't know if it is. It's probably just a normal temple or something. Oh, and Japan reconquers Los Angeles, and Japan has entered the modern era, so good job Japan. And two cities in one turn for Japan as they reconquer Vijaya here in Eastern Asia. The Huns also peace out with Parthia right when they were finally having some success, so they have handed the keys over to Mongolia. Yet yeah, the Huns actually grabbed this in the peace deal, but Korea have grabbed the former Khazar capital, and Mongolia should probably grab this city and then this one might be safe just because it's sort of in a corner and you can't really get through the Huns without open borders so they might be safe in the little corner I don't know if Korea brings over the planes then they are just sitting ducks that will slowly get chipped away at which is a really sad thought so hopefully that doesn't happen but who knows we'll we'll find out very soon of course turn 142 we're getting through it is quite slow but there's so many sieves it's always going to be like that I'm afraid 
there's still plenty going on. I'm sure we're getting. We normally have. You normally have two phases of wars, or maybe more. You have the initial like just constant stream of them. Then it pieces out for a while. Everyone rebuilds. Like in Europe and North America at the moment, everyone's genuinely very quiet. Africa as well. I mean, South America has not even had their first sort of bout of wars just yet. There's been. I think Brazil fought the Corral very briefly right at the start, but that's it. Brazil continuing just to make the most of the land they already have, which is not the worst strategy. Fortaleza is a fifth city for them and another coastal city. So maybe they're setting their sights on the ocean. I mean, Brazil in this kind of game, it's not going to be easy to attack your neighbours. All the South Americans genuinely are pretty well fortified at the very least. Corral's pretty strong too. Uh, not so much the Inca, but they're still you know, really hard to get to. It wouldn't be the worst idea for Brazil to build up quite a big navy. Look at Mali, look at Morocco, you know, try something on the coast. Because, I mean, the African nations, particularly, I mean, the Congo here, they're not particularly protecting their coast, even South Africa. Yeah, it might be better for Brazil to consider expanding across the Atlantic. And this would suggest that, some new coastal cities. I'm assuming Rio has got some amazing production at 33 pop. About nine population ahead of the rest of the other big cities in the world. Brasilia is going to be... Coming along nicely, copper mine should help. And Arabia has been eliminated. There you go, Ethiopia. Getting the job done, they conquer Mecca. So that was a surprise, but yeah, Ethiopia. They were one, there was a little question mark over, I was saying. There's a lot of mid-tier sieves in Africa. Maybe Ethiopia fell a little below the standard. But this is certainly, that improves them. This puts them up there again with the Burundis, Congo, South Africa, Benin, Egypt. Songhai are in there as well. I think I was being a bit harsh to them because I expect so much from them being my favourite sieve and all. But there we go. Um, yeah, Morocco and Mali probably more to do. They're not rubbish. It's just that they're not going to get anywhere. It's kind of like what I was saying with the Incans. They're not completely useless or rubbish or out of this. It's just I don't really see a future where they can get any better. So the Songhai will eventually. It might be painful. Very slow. Very brutal and costly in terms of units, but eventually I see the Songhai taking them out. So they, there we go. And the Songhai, yeah, big cities. I think they're still definitely a contender. Big border with Benin. Obviously the Songhai also is a little bit safer here than someone like Benin who borders more bigger countries. And there we go. Japan losing and reconquering Vijaya again. Pretty successfully. Samoa's turn. Parthia. And there's the Chinook who do go lost. And it always takes forever, so we will appreciate this moment. <laughs> uh, the Harappa pieced out with Germany. I did not know that was going on. Germany, I've not really spoken about much this game at all. They're doing okay. I just, again, don't really know what, what do they do. They're not going to attack Attila. They can't get to the Goths feasibly for a one-strip tile of land. Austria is difficult with a citadel and units. Maybe if Austria got weakened by somebody else, but who's going to do that? Yeah, I don't really know. Germany, and they can't even, like, they're not even in the sort of Belgium, Spain, Britain position where they know that one day France will probably fall because Belgium cuts them off from France. So Germany can't even be sort of patient and wait for that. There is Denmark, but yeah, I mean, they're pretty equal, so it's kind of difficult at that point. Most wonderful people, Belgium and California and South Africa, all have four. Brazil and the Indonesians have three. Two for the Corral, Celts, Mayans, Sioux, and Korea. So there we go. So who's got all the wonders so far in this game. And I also saw, I think that was Congo and India pieced out at some point. I must have missed that and didn't say it, but another peace deal. Let's see, the city is clinging on in the yellow, but Mongolia should get this pretty soon. I don't know how they're doing damage to it, to be fair. All the Gatling guns are too far away. I think this artillery is too far away. So I don't know if maybe it's just the cavalry just... Taken one for the team, charging into them. Russia now with riflemen. Maybe there's still hope for them. I mean, if Russia and Germany teamed up against Attila, I don't know. Maybe. Just because Russia's, like, spammed out and filled their borders with units. I think eventually they'd run out and that would be the issue. But maybe, you know. If they got Russia, Germany, and the Goths, the AI's not capable of doing this, so don't worry. But if Russia, Germany, and the Goths teamed up, like, I think between the three of them, they would certainly cause... A lot of issues, especially if they get like a Mongolia or someone just to give them a little bit of help as a team. But yeah, at that point we're really talking in very big hypotheticals from what we've got evidence of the AI doing. 
Britain pieces out with Denmark, nothing really happened or changing hands, and Carthage completes Big Ben. Pretty cool. So that means they've gone down the commerce social policy tree. I haven't looked at the social policies. So I can do that soon. I was, I, I'll say next episode, but I'll probably forget by tomorrow. So make sure to spam it in the comments if I do forget. And we'll look at it. But I'll try to remember for next episode. And industrial era. It's, it's not good if you're still entering the industrial era, Shoshone. But you're still holding off the Iroquois, so I'll give you some credit. But it is starting to look like you're fading. It looks like this city might be doomed a little bit. The artillery seems to be picking people off. You just seem a little bit like you've got less units. These cities much safer, much deeper into your territory. You can sort of fall back and protect this area. But yeah, this city could be a rough time. Oh, who is this? Someone's attacking Texas. I don't know who. And apparently, somehow, I assume Texas have an ability to let them steal units or something. But they have managed to get one of the Chinook boats on their side. That's pretty impressive. Cool. Yeah, they must like steal boats or something similar to the Ottomans. And there we go, Belgium breaking the curve, not going for autocracy or order. One of the nations with the most tourism as well. Important to bear in mind. So yeah, Belgium goes with freedom. So there we go. I don't know if that will take off. I think we've got eight autocracy, four order, and one freedom sieve. So Belgium leading the way. The land of the brave and the home of the free <laughs> in this game. It's going to be Belgium, I guess. There you go. Where all the people are surrounded by a giant wall. Something contradictory in there, but don't worry. It's all fine. Belgium is great. There we go. That will be it for this episode. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.